Um, first question is, how much time do we have? Or what time does Mauro steal the cable? Okay, I decide. Great. <laughs> I'll, I'll be generous. My, okay, so 20 minutes from now, I'll go to questions at 10 of. Great, um, I'll try to, to stay on pace. Um, indeed, I'm giving quite a similar talk. This is uh, the same concept, but then on the semantic web. So the question becomes, how do we translate that? How many people here know what the semantic web is? Start, start, Jen. Not absolutely everybody. How many people here work with the semantic web? How many people consider export to the semantic web an important part of their wikis? This is better than I hoped. This is great. This is good news. I'm, I'm glad this is happening. Um, exactly three years ago, plus a couple weeks, this was what I was looking at. A lot of the same faces. I hosted or helped host this conference in Amsterdam. And then we had about 35, 40 people. I think about half of these faces are here in the room, but then twice as many. So it's great to see uh, how much uh, this has grown. And it was great to have all of these faces in a classroom that I often teach in and in the building where I work. So very happy to be here. I'll cut to the point. This is what I'm presenting. You download a special page extension. You type in the URI, oops, I need to watch my buttons here, the URI of a semantic web ontology. You click up on generate and voila. You generate a whole bunch of special of uh, semantic forms code with a few other extensions on it. Uh, most importantly, you generate forms. Um, you generate properties as well, categories also. Um, in this case, I loaded the most popular ontology on the semantic web, friend of a friend or fof. And this is what you get. And this is what you get uh, for free. Just like with, uh, with Erwin's talk, you get a lot of generated um, Wikimedia, uh, semantic media wiki code, mostly forms, semantic forms, but you don't have to look at it um, because you can always regenerate it later if you get another ontology or if you extend the ontology or if you want to override the default style that you get. And that's what a lot of this talk is about. The two parts of this talk, how do you fully automatically generate a default wiki style from a given ontology? And if you want to fine tune that style, how do you do that efficiently? Um, so this is an example of what you get. Purely default, um, and here's the classic example, Tim Berners-Lee, this came up at least uh, one, of, one of the talks so far. Um, you can right away enter data about Tim Berners-Lee just by having entered that URI and pressing uh, generate, but also, of course, having had that data model or ontology available to you. Um, this is the forms code that's generated. It's, it's a bit friendlier looking than Erwin's, but that's because there's white space put in. It's basically a pretty print generated, and it's uh, pretty much what you get for automatically from Yaron Semantic Forms extension if you use uh, create class, create uh, property. Although this is automatically uh, generated. Unlike forms, the idea isn't here necessarily that you further tinker with this code, but like with Erwin's approach that you, and also with uh, Yaron's approach with um, page schemas that you can further extend the style separately and then regenerate this code. So even the developer never has to see this code and probably ideally should never tinker with this code. Um, now this is a standard RDF export from this wiki. So this is what puts the information about Tim Berners-Lee that we just entered online. You see, you get a URI for this page, you get some properties, the properties are filled in. You get the URIs for the properties, but what you also get is semantic wiki, semantic media wiki's equivalent property gets used to say that the URIs for all of these properties and also the URI for this, I'm sorry, the URIs for the properties and for the class are given an equivalent. And what this means is that if you export this RDF into a semantic web repository or endpoint, and if it has the right reasoners turned on, which it usually does, what it infers is that everything that's entered on the prop for properties about Tim Berners-Lee on this wiki is also put in terms of FOF properties. So it's uh, briefly said, you load this RDF into the right type of endpoint, and the FOF properties get properly acknowledged for what you filled in on the wiki. So with that one step, enter the URI, click generate, get a form, fill it in. You're publishing information using 
a shared ontology, in this case, friend of a friend. And this is why you do it. This sheet has also been shown before. This is the, I think, the last generated photograph of, well, photograph graph of the semantic web from two years ago. They stopped uh, because it got too uh, complex, if uh, I paraphrase what, what Anya said. It, it now just looks like a cloud, and you can make as much sense of it as a cloud from the sky. Um, the numbers remain impressive. And of course, here in the center is DBpedia, which um, remains the keystone of the semantic web, and that data is, of course, as we heard from a bunch of talks today and yesterday, generated by a wiki, generated by a media wiki. Um, this was four years earlier, the semantic web. It started with DBpedia. FOF was then a big contributor of at least an ontology through which people could enter data. Um, by the way, all of these bubbles are repositories that are online, and the arrows are shared URIs. Um, sometimes they're shared data, like the, the URI for Tim Berners-Lee you can take from DBPD and you can share that. But these, what these arrows also state is the sharing of ontologies. Thus, you share the URIs for properties and the URIs for classes to have a common data model with other components on the semantic web. And FOF was then the primary contributor of a data model. And it reminds the primary contributor of a data model. It remains the most frequently used ontology on the semantic web. So what you get with this, with uh, our wiki forms, is what I'm presenting, is you enter a URI. You have, what you also have, of course, is your own semantic media wiki that's installed. And you add to it a few lines in your local settings to put the data on an endpoint. And this is not from my, this is not from our wiki forms. This is from Semantic Media Wiki itself. You can very quickly set up an endpoint online. And that becomes this. This is your Sparkle endpoint on the Semantic Web. So you have, you have a wiki that's already set up with an endpoint. You load my extension as well, our wiki forms, enter the URI for foe for whatever, and you're on the semantic web. You're instantly publishing, simply by having the URI, having the right tools, and clicking generate. Now, this is the perspective of FOF. This is a tool called Protege. This is the most frequently used uh, tool for editing ontologies on the, on the semantic web. This is friend of a friend. I'm showing you this because what happens if you take this approach is you take a data model-driven approach. And that is not an approach that has been followed on Semantic Web until, uh, Semantic Media Wiki until maybe uh, this session. Um, semantic forms and the related extensions have been heading very much in that direction. Uh, and I, th I think, Yaren, in the documents I read and, and the, what the code you write, you've been aware of the importance of acknowledging data. But most Semantic Media Wiki implementations are interface driven with an increasingly large amount of data model orientation behind it. And what I'm presenting here is what happens if you flip it around. You have a data model. It's not a semantic wiki data model. It's a semantic web data model. And you want to make a, a, a wiki that generates that, and you want to do it quickly. And all of your generation about the interface then becomes turned around. You, your interface is driven by the data model. And then, and I'll show this in the rest of the talk, how do you fine tune that default interface to get the interface you want? And if you have a process for doing that, is that then the easiest and most efficient and most maintainable way to set up media wikis that publish on a semantic web? Or perhaps even, if you're, if you're semantic web agnostic, which I think most semantic media wiki people are, you know that it can, it can happen. Maybe it's still the easiest way to do it for two reasons. One is you need a data model, but you know that the semantic web has a data model that suits your needs. Even if you don't intend to publish, maybe it's easier just to take that data model, enter the URI on something like our wiki forms, and you get right away an interface that you can start working with. Um, on the other hand, I doubt this, this last part, but maybe it's easier to write the data model separately, even if all you want to do is make a new data model and just make your wiki and you're done. Maybe it's actually easier to use Protege to set up your data model. And when you have the data model, then maintain it with Protege and, and create the default interface, or Protege with you creating the cascading semantic web style sheet using a standard called Fresnel. Um, so, 
this is this is an overview. The input is an ontology. The output is a wiki. Um, I'll show you more details later. This is mostly academic packaging for it, but um, we're, I think we're more technically and practically oriented here. I'll move forward. This has been my driving example, Tim Berners-Lee from Wikipedia. And here is an info box. Now, what would happen if Wikipedia was implemented with OWL wiki forms? Um, that would have a lot of uh, ramifications for wiki, the, wiki data, the wiki data project and also the uh, mappings project. I doubt it'll happen. But um, it would be nice. But what if um, you could download the public ontologies and you could have a whole bunch of, st and you could have Wiki Wikipedia be the default interface for that, and then Wikipedians could do style sheets to make sure that it gets adapted correctly. And all of the, the right fields in semantic forms would be set up to help make sure that valid data is entered. For example, you have pull down. Um, you have auto-completion on classes to make sure that if you say father of, you only enter a person. You don't enter Berlin as father of Tim Berners-Lee per accident. Um, so what we have, this is what my style target is. Haven't achieved it, but that remains my, uh, my goal. This is what it looks like on Wikipedia. And you could, if you wanted to interpret all of Wikipedia to semantic forms, it would be easy, right? You just, uh, um, <laughs> Yaren uh, Shrik uh, uh, is stunned by that proposal. But it could in principle. It could in theory. Um, and here's the RDF. This is what shows up on DBpedia for the same code. I don't know if all of you can see that there on the bottom. Um, so the, the question is, can all of this happen? Maybe not this part. But this part and this part happen with an OWL Wikiforms approach by just taking the external ontologies and a, perhaps a bit of non-default style code. I use, you probably have recognized a lot of the principles from cascading style sheets. I also want to cascade. That you have style, you, maybe you have the default style for uh, an ontology, and then you have the default style for a website, and maybe the user could set up his or her own style for the semantic web on Semantic Media Wiki, just like people do with CSS. Um, and it's not widely known, but CSS has a default style sheet for HTML. This, whenever you use HTML, you have the SS CSS style sheet for HTML, but that cascades on top of the default. And here the default, because CSS applies not to HTML, CSS applies to XML. So this is the default style sheet for how HTML as an XML subset gets presented. And then other style sheets go on top of that. So the OWL Wikiforms approach is to generate a default style sheet for any given ontology. And then you can have additional style sheets cascade on top of that. I also borrow concepts out of model-driven development. Um, we do some research on that at my university, the Open University in the Netherlands. And um, I teach some classes about it. And we have a tool called Cathedron, where you can enter a data model, or you can take a database and use its data model. And then you get the default interface from that which you can add data. And then there are various mechanisms for extending it. And I use this tool as a bit of inspiration, but also model-driven concepts in general. How much can we apply model-driven development combined with cascading style sheets to Semantic Media Wiki? Um, and here are some of the core concepts that, uh, that I use. Oh, by the way, um, these sheets are linked on SlideShare from the page that I put on the wiki. I'm not sure if it'll work if everyone clicks on it at the same time, but, uh, but it's there. Um, what I present here is Fresnel. Fresnel is a World Wide Web Consortium note. It means it looks like it's a standard, but it isn't really officially a standard. It's uh, something someone got to post on the website. But it is implemented by at least two tools. And what Fresnel is, is a way to specify how a semantic browser appears to the user. A semantic browser is, of course, a browser for data that's purely on the semantic web, not HTML. You just get a bunch of triples. How do you make those triples appear? on a semantic browser. Fresnel defines the appearance of RDF on a semantic browser. Um, interestingly, semantic browsers also have a default appearance. They have effectively a default style sheet for any RDF. And this is what you get on the browse properties view, more or less, on semantic media wiki. That is like the default Fresnel style sheet for data in general. 
And what we have here is this, these, these com this comes from, oh, I have the URL here, this comes from various talks. This is Tim Berners-Lee, again used it as an example, but in another context here, in Fresnel. Here we have RDF triples for Tim Berners-Lee. Here is the default view. And here is a view with uh, Fresnel. In this case, the Fresnel code is handwritten. Um, and what Fresnel is, is an ontology a way in which you can set up RDF triples to, um, to, to, to present style. And that's what I generate automatically with Al Wikiforms. You generate Fresnel as the default uh, presentation of uh, the data, and then I convert Fresnel to semantic forms so that you then have a website. And what I also do is I allow people to add their own Fresnel triples in addition to that which gets automatically generated. And then they can fine tune the style. Fresnel, but a problem there is Fresnel doesn't intentionally do cascading. I had to, it does have conflict resolution and I misuse the conflict resolution a bit to allow uh, what emulates cascading. And that's what I present now in our wiki forms. What I'd like to do, and I'll show a slide more about this later, is extend the, the Fresnel ontology with extras that help uh, Fresnel work in the context of semantic forms and semantic media wiki. Um, page schemas takes a very similar approach. I'll do some comparison quickly. Um, one difference is that page schemas does not handle the data as uh, something separate. Um, what, what both Fresnel and page schemas do is they have declarative, standardized syntaxes. The difference is uh, XML instead of RDF. But also in page schema, the data model and style are combined while Fresnel uh, keeps them separate. You can download it yourself. Um, the URI is on the, um, on the slides. Um, this is the general architecture. No time to present this. You can look at it for details later. You can ask me questions about it. But an important component here is, of course, the local endpoint that handles all of the um, RDF processing, but also the reasoning, the inferencing that's needed to uh, drive a lot of this. And what you load is not only the RDF code for the ontology, but you can also type in on the first screen on the special page R the RDF file for your Fresnel non-default cascading triples. And right now I've been writing that by hand, or perhaps with uh, Protégé. What I'd like to do later is run the Fresnel ontology through our wiki forms so that you can have a forms-based interface to enter Fresnel style, then export that and then run it back in again into our wiki forms. And that way you have a wiki-based interface to determine the style, the non-default cascading style that you set up on your wiki. Um, some slides we've seen already, just to review. You, you, you enter this in, perhaps also RDF for your style. You get this, you get a form, this is how it looks. Thing you need to watch out for when you talk about the semantic web is inferencing. What the constructs mean is different than what we expect, and you need to account for that. Um, example, example, example. These are all online, also on the web page in the form of a tutorial, and it all works. And if you want to talk in depth, this is my mapping. This is the last slide, by the way. This is my mapping from what we have on the semantic web what Fresnel allows and how it gets mapped to MediaWiki and semantic forms and other extensions. And this is for the default display. There are a lot of semantic forms components that aren't used here, but they can be used for the non-default cascading style. And what I'd like to do for a next step is extend Fresnel with components that mirror in RDF and in an ontology what we can do with forms and other semantic media wiki extensions so that we can write a non-default style that fully exploits all the possibilities we current, ha currently have for building an interface on the semantic wiki. And that's it. Are there any questions? Yeah, I so see you use RDF as label there for wiki titles. Um, yeah, yeah I, to be honest, what's in pink means I want to do it, but I haven't implemented it yet. But yes, that, that's, that's right. the next, one of the next steps. Yeah, I was interested, are you looking into using some other uh, properties as well? Because 
some there is um, like uh, Scos preferred so, label. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a, a variety of different, and sometimes you you might not have the label available. Th that's a very important point. What is the piece of text that you use to label the page or label the property, label the class on the interface? Currently, I, I try to guess what the namespace URI component is and cut that off and then take what's at the end because that works for every ontology. If you have RDFS label, I'd like to use that as well. And I'll keep extending that. RDFS label, I'll use Scopes, preferred label, then you know that that's really the one you should use in addition to all the other alternatives. And maybe there are others as well. Those are all important components yeah, to put in. It seems to me that it would be nice to have a, like a maybe general component or something that can, where you can prioritize these and, and yeah. like take what you have and as a last resort, maybe just take the local part or something. You can also use Fresnel label, and you can explicitly you can say, say on your non-default style sheet what label you want to, do, to use. Yeah. It's, it's an important question. It applies to a lot of semantic web uh, tools. How do you yeah. know which label is the label? Exactly. I, I, I'm, I'm, I've been fighting with that in the RDFIO extension. I, I'm just thinking it would be nice to have a general strategy that others can reuse and so on. We'll make it. Or uh, convince other, convince the community to adopt one that they all share, and then that can show up in uh, various tools. Hey, do you have other questions? Hi, I'm. Uh, I find the I found the the bottom corner of the the last slide uh, fascinating. It uh, it was um, well, just imagine Sorry. it. Sorry, um, it uh, it covered um, RDF uh, owls stuff that can um, uh, define the, the you know, more about the, uh, oh man, uh, more about the constraints uh, and structure and, and, you know, form input yeah. uh, of fields. I wasn't aware that something like that existed. It was called data range or something like that. I don't know if well, you can talk um, about that. Uh, data, uh, well, the, the range in OWL says, um, for a given property, what can the values be? And it can either be um, a data property, it can either be an object property, so it ends up being uh, a class on semantic week. It can also be a data property. And then you, then you can set up data types for what it is. And they're standardized, these are XSD, uh, XML schema data types that you can use on the semantic web. And our wiki forms has a conversion from um, XSD types to semantic media wiki types and also to um, semantic forms interfaces for how you input those types. So for display, but also for input. And that you have. And you also have at the very bottom a cardinality. So you can say on the semantic web there can only be one speaker of a talk, for example. Um, so in the, in the forms interface, you need to make sure that it's mandatory, but not a list. That's also on there as well. Um, yeah, um, yeah, there's no patent or copyright on it, and the code is on the website. And if you want to add to it or, or work together on it or finish it for me, um, that, would, that would be great. Yeah, thanks, Lloyd. Okay, thank you.